Hi and welcome to Sonia Mosnick's uh, Watercolors. Um, this uh, little demonstration is all about uh, waves and water and a few rocks. And I'm going to be using some phalo blue green shade. No, pardon me, phalo blue yellow, phalo green yellow shade. Then I'm going to be using some cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of um, burnt umber, as I don't have my sepia available, and we'll see if we need anything else. So I'm going to be using a very soft Da Vinci brush, a large Da Vinci brush. This is a three, and I will be um, basically starting off. We don't have in my image, and I just moved my image away here. I have a black and white of this. The water continues all the way out because of the narrowness of this portion of the uh, display with the spray. But this is, um, we can change all these aspects. So I can make this a little bit more of a sky if I want to. I can break it to here and put in a little bit of sky with some cloud. And there was, in this particular larger frame, there was some cloud, um, stratus cloud, not cumulus, which is puffy, but just some streaks of white in the sky. So we'll add in a little bit of that. And then the uh, water is going to be a little bit of blue-green, so that's where the viridian comes in. And if we need uh, a little bit of purple to go in with our... Um, oh yeah, there was going to be ultramarine blue in here too. Um, and that was just to help us to mix and get some darks. So I'm just putting some ultramarine blue into my palette here. I'm using a mixture of colors today, both Opus, um, Van Gogh, and um, Daniel Smith, and even a little bit of, um, what was it, uh, Windsor Newton. The Windsor Newton is the phalo green blue, um, yellow shade. Okay, so let's try this out. We're going to tilt the paper a bit, and we don't have to do a lot of work to get this to get started, but we do want to have a little bit of water up here to begin with. And, and then just continuing the process down here. So let's see if we can do that. I'll be right back. I have a one eighth of a sheet of um, arches in front of me, so it's gonna be a very fast process. So I'm trying to put down, and I see that there's some color in my brush, so I better clean that out. Just trying to put down some water here. And from the black and white, you can see the spray that comes out. There's some sparkle here, but we'll try and lift that sparkle. But this will try and focus around keeping that from getting wet. And um, this area here. So this is where we get started. I have a little palette here that I've set up, and I already put my finger into the phalo blue. Clean that up. That's why we have tissues around. And this is my cerulean on the side here. I also have this cerulean here too. So here's the fresh cerulean that I put together. So let's move that in there and try and get that activated. This is an older tube. So you can see right away that the paint is already a little bit drier. Okay, now we're getting some action here. Let's try putting that down. I said there were some streaks of the white cloud there, so let's just add those two streaks right in there right now before I forget. And then just put some more color in here. And now we have to watch where the dry spray is going to be. Let's just have some fun with this. Okay. As you can see now, I'm starting to dry brush where I didn't have any of the actual water put down. And so that's where our spray is going to be. And we need to now build up some darker bits behind there to get a little bit better of the image of that. And then to also get the fact that we have um, sky versus sea. So we got to get some darks in here. 
And I can do that by taking some of the phthalo blue green shade ooh, and popping it in, but it's really strong. And that's always fun when you find out that you've put way too much paint because what's happened here is I have it straight from the tube. And so now you get to see how it works straight from the tube. So I'm going to try and bring that down and we're going to bring it all the way down into the bottom here because we need to dry brush some blues in here as the waves and stuff are happening. So I'm just going to try and keep lifting that paint out and bring it down here. And I'm just trying to look to see. So there's a lot of that nice spray around this area, but there's a little bit of hint of water coming through there. And I'm just going to keep working that out into small little bits here and there. I need a little bit of water. And now I'm just going to start working some of that color into my... And if I have a tissue handy, which I just did, you could also lift to get some highlights a little bit out of the back. And if I have to, I can lift all of that out to, to make it work. So I'm just going to pull that out, put that over here. Try and get some nice dark spots. Now, I'm looking because there is definitely some bits and pieces in between here. And we can soften and let that come up a bit. Give it just that feeling of the splashing of water. Okay, and then come back in here and I'm just going to water down my brush a bit with some water. Now, I have a very uh, watery brush, so the way to, to deal with that and keep the pigment is just to get the water off of the ferrule and dry it a bit. And you'll have a little bit more control of that paint and water right on the edge, on the tip. But the tip will stay really nice and light. Now I'm just trying to look here. There's a bit more in here coming through. dab a bit uh, so that looks a little bit more really realistic here as opposed to just dabs from the and we'll bring in a little bit of possibly some purple possibly some sepia depends on where we go while that's drying now and leaving that in there um, most of my nice cloud has also dissipated because I have it tilted the board tilted so I'm gonna have to come in to try and lift a little bit more of that cloud in the background Okay. Now for the uh, wonderful rocks that we're going to use, we will first take some burnt umber and mix that in with my blue because we'll start to get a bit of a grayish. Right now it's a little too green. There we go. And I'll add in a little bit of my, I'm trying to remember, this is ultramarine blue, I think. A little bit more of my brown. A little bit more ultramarine blue, just to get a darker gray. Okay. Oh, I've got some spots there which we can easily just dab out. So the bottom of the rock is quite dark, so we'll begin down here at the bottom. And there's some foam in there, so we'll try and put that in there. Now we're going to tilt, not tilt it so much because I'm getting too much runoff of my water. So coming up here around the rock, we have to think about this spray that's coming around the rock. And, and the lightness that I'm seeing at the top as the spray comes around and so there's different areas where that can happen. Now we can create an effect by having a little salt in here but I'm gonna try and just use just small bits and dabs to see if I can get the same effect. And There's more of a striation in this rock here. Just 
just going to pull up my original photograph and show you. And I keep touching my wet paints and I'm getting paint all over my thumb here. That's the only disadvantage of putting it into a small tray instead of your normal palette. Okay, uh, just let me just pop in a little bit of grays while I have the gray here. There's some gray right in there. And the gray is more in this area here. Okay, let's let that dry for the moment. I just want to bring my photograph up. To darken it even more, I can easily... Okay, I can easily bring in a few more other areas here. Now, this is really dark in there, so I'm going to come back into directly into my burnt umber and drop in that burnt umber in there. But I also see some greenish area. So let's let's first put a little bit of the dark and the dark here and the dark here and the dark there and we will bring in some of that phthalo green in just a moment to try and add a little bit of color to that. I'm just going to drop that over a bit more. That needs to add a little bit here. And there's even a bit of a log behind there, but I'm just going to stick to the rocks. But that, let's give that a little bit of tie-in together with this rock here, which is showing quite strong on the left, and then pretty much all white, whitish after that. And there's little spatters of white in there. a bit more coloring in here but later so what I'm going to do in just a moment I'm just going to bring up some of these areas and then I'm going to soften it with a tissue so we have right here I'm going to soften it soften it soften it I don't know what that is more paint I guess oh yeah okay and then same here uh, let's get some of these areas softened again little bit of extra color in there um, and I said I was gonna get some of the phthalo green let's just pop that in or viridian you can use viridian too and it seemed to be showing up on the rock here almost like a moss and then even even into the the green kind of was carrying in a little bit greenish gray into the bits of the water here let's pop that in doesn't have to be so strong. Let's add a little bit of water, dab it out of my, and see if we can get it softer here. It was coming more on that side, coming up a bit, and into this area. Let's dab it out a bit. Okay, and over here there was a bit of that same coloring. Here, oh, that's a bit strong. Where else? Oh, up here. I saw it up here. So let's dab that out a bit. And it is coming up here in more of a. Let's try and dab it up like that. Let that sit there. Same thing here. Let's bring in a little bit more of that green. And that green kind of comes into the base here, too, where the foam is. Let's try and add a bit more in here, and I'll dab a bit out once I just... I need some in here. And we're going to put it right on the edge, just as coming down the rock and then over to the side here. And there's a bit of reflection in here of something that's over there. And I'm um, just going to dab in a bit more and then come out and lift it a bit. Underneath here, definitely some really nice swells coming up in this area. I'm just going to add a little bit more green to that. 
so that could be viridian or the phalo green yellow shade that I've got there and there's a bit more in here um, now around here where I had the rock I haven't really put a lot in there there's more splatter and then some nice grays just in between here so I'm going to use some more of this green with a little bit more of the burnt umber try to get an interesting very light gray grayish green up in here Now that seems very dark, so again, dabbing it out a bit. Now that seems a bit strong, so let's try and create that shape that we've got here. What I really need is a bit of dry brushing, and I don't have, my brush is too wet, so I'm going to use a, a Filbert style flat brush that's going to give me some streaking ability and a little bit of ability to dry brush around here. And I can pull some of this color over that's still wet into this area, even here. And it'll also give me that stippling that I can add to. So I definitely need a lot darker under the rocks. So I'm going to go to, um, where's my other colors here? I'll try the ultramarine blue first. So I'm not sure that's going to be the right color, but we'll just try it out here. It's quite strong. There's definitely more strength in the colors in there. And it would be reflecting some of the colors off the water too. Um, there was some shadow in here. Okay, now I'm just going to dab it a bit. Since I have that color on there, it's working nicely. I'll just try and move it around a bit. We need to fix just a little bit more around this rock here. You're not getting I'm not getting a good feel that you understand what that is. So I'll get some browns in there in just a moment. Again just with a little dry brushing so hopefully that you get the idea that there's foam happening around there. There was a little bit more uh, depth just on the edges here, so I'm just going to add a little bit of dark. And I'm trying to see a little bit more dark in here. Um, just a tiny bit more dark in this area in here. And this rock has a little bit more shadow along here. A little bit more lining like that. Definitely more darks in there. I'm gonna get some more of that brown. Just add in a bit more there. It's definitely darker in this area. And darker down in here. A little bit of shadow there. A little bit more. Oh, that's a bit dark. Let's just dry that out a bit. And there is some foam in there, so I've got to try and create that little bit more variegated, variegated wash there. And then there's definitely more darks in here and a few kind of craggy lines that I lost. So let's try and bring those out again. So this is really a mixture of the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue in there. There was definitely some nice shadows just where the water was cutting in. So let's try and bring those back. Look here, there was a little bit of dark in here. More dark in that area here. And just, just pulling out a bit of that color in here. It's a bit more dark right in this area here. Let's get a little bit more. Kind of a few darks coming up to make it feel like the swirl of the water was coming up that way. I'm going to add a little bit of dark into that area. And then there's just a bit of dry brushing I'm going to add into here and around here. Now I should have a little bit of a dark line 
around the edge of the rock in just a couple places so you get that feeling of the rock. There was a bit more splash, so let's try and add a little bit more shadowing there. Just looking to see if we need anything else. I don't think so. We've got a fairly good uh, splash that's going up here. And sometimes there's just a bit of dark behind some of those splashes coming through. And I think we're pretty good with just the looseness in the background there. Let's see if I can lift this up a bit. You can see it a bit better. There we go. So that's our little bit of water scene. And I'll just sign that, find a proper color to sign that with. I'm just adding some colors and I'll sign that right in there. And since I have a bit more green on there, I will just pop in a bit more green. All right, I hope you enjoyed this demo.